Welcome to this daily devotion for Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, along with Pastor Wesley. We serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and welcome you to this time of daily devotion where we can grow closer together in love of God and love of neighbor. Our theme this week is Good Shepherd, the true shepherd. So I encourage you to hear the invocation as we invite God into our presence today. True shepherd of our souls, who calls his own by name, Help us this hour to hear and to heed your voice. We know no other voice. No other voice will we follow. Amen. I love that prayer, to hear and to heed your voice. Because it's sometimes often that we hear God's voice, but then do we heed God's voice as well? It is a both and. We not only need to listen so that we can hear, but we also need to heed, to act. That's what prayer is all about, listening and acting. We continue with our theme psalm, Psalm 80, picking up in verse 4. Lord God of heavenly forces, how long will you fume against your people's prayer? You fed them bread made of tears. You've given them tears to drink three times over. You've put us at odds with our neighbors. Our enemies make fun of us. Restore us. God of heavenly forces, make your face shine so that we can be saved. May God bless the reading. I think we all feel like this going through this pandemic. Our prayers sometimes seem unanswered. You've given us tears to drink three times over. We're at odds with our neighbor. And in a lot of that was happening before the pandemic, but it seems to be a constant struggle. Our enemies make fun of us. Restore us. It's okay to pray. Is God doing all of this to us? I don't think so. I think we do all this stuff to ourselves pretty well without God's intervention. But I think God can restore us. And so I think it's important to cry out and to know what, again, listen, hear, and heed. Crying out should change something in us so that we may say, okay, what do I need to do? to help end this pandemic? What do I need to do to help the tensions with my neighbors stop, to bring peace to this world? Because that's the call. That's what the shepherd is calling us to do. And we may heed his voice or not. We continue with the prophets this time back to Jeremiah. Chapter 31, one of my favorite chapters in um, the prophet Jeremiah, starting in verse 10. Listen to the Lord's word, you nations, and announce it to distant islands. The one who scattered Israel will gather them and keep them safe as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will rescue the people of Jacob and deliver them from power of those stronger than they are. And they will come shouting for joy on the hills of Zion, jubilant over the Lord's gifts, grain, wine, oil, flocks, and herds. Their lives will be like a lush garden. They will grieve no more. When the young women will dance for joy, then the young women will dance for joy. The young and old men will join in. Their mourning will turn into laughter and their sadness into joy. I will comfort them. I will lavish the priest with abundance. And shower my people to, with gifts, declares the Lord. We have this hope. That because God is with us, there will always be good times. And in the midst of our lives, there are good times. If you truly open yourself to them, even in the midst of great turmoil, there is joy. And, and at least in my experience, there are ups and downs and times that we can come back and say, wow, God is with me. But even if everything just goes broke, even if everything just is torn down, even if our life is like Job's and we've lost it all. We still hope for that day when the Lord gathers all people together in the flock. 
keeps them safe, provides them good gifts, and their lives will be like what? A lush garden. Again, we hear that idea of returning to this paradise that God intended for humanity as Jesus appeared to Mary in the garden as the new Adam, the new gardener. And so I think we look for that hope today, but ultimately we look for that hope in the future. Our next reading today comes from Freedom of Simplicity by Richard Foster, the Quaker author. Perhaps no one has captured the exuberant spirit of simple caring and sharing better than the Christian philosopher Aristides, Aristides, whose words, written in 125, are so moving that they are best quoted in full. They walk in all humility and kindness, and falsehood is not found among them, and they love one another. They despise not the widow and grieve not the orphan. He that hath distributeth liberally to him and hath not. If they see a stranger, they bring him under their roof and rejoice over him as if he were their own brother. For they call themselves brethren, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit of God. But when one of their poor passes away from this world, and any of them see him, then he provides for his burial accordingly to his ability. And if they hear that any of their number is imprisoned or oppressed in the name of their Messiah, all of them provide for his needs. And if it is possible that he may be delivered, they deliver him. And if there is a if there is among them a person that is poor and needy, and they have not an abundance of necessities, they fast two or three days that they may supply the needy with their necessary food. That ends the quote. This model of simplicity speaks to our condition. How desperately we need today to discover new creative ways of caring and sharing with any in need. God bless the reading today. It, it, I mean, it's a constant theme, and it's a constant theme throughout Scripture because it is a constant challenge in our world. We have abundance, and we live in scarcity. It is abhorrent, and I believe God detests the fact that people go hungry in our world when God has created a world that has an abundance of food for all people. We have wonderful technology and the ability to cure so much, and yet we keep that behind locked doors all too often and pay thresholds. The same with education. We have so much knowledge, yet we keep that behind gates and large sums of cash <laughs> that it takes to get that continuing education. It's a sad truth. And we as Christians should be called to change it. To speak out against it. To not so be so obsessed about what other people have. But how we can help. I love this idea of if someone's going without something, fast for three days so that they can have it. We don't even need to do that. Most of us could just give more <clears throat> and we would probably be okay. Most of us have more than enough. Continue to challenge yourself. How are you a good sheep to the good shepherd? Today we pray for those in leadership. I pray for a day when all those in leadership are truly people with servant hearts, regardless of their creed or religion. We're a long way from that. But to truly lead means to serve. 
as Christ taught us. Because that's the only way you can approach such a a great task with the kind of humility it takes. Let us be in prayer. Lord, you call many to lead. And you call us all to lead in various ways, in in our own pastures, in our own micro-flocks. We are sheep who sometimes are called to be shepherds. Allow us to lead people towards you and your kingdom, to seek you and your righteousness. And we know all these things will be provided for us. We pray this in your holy name. And we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow, I leave you with the benediction. In this moment of quietness, I have heard your call, my Lord. Now lead on, and I will follow. Till tomorrow, friends. Goodbye.